So let's look at the word that he used there repeatedly in. So you saw that in verse 10, the Father in me, and the Father dwelleth in me. And then verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake, okay? Now, we read on. We read all of John's uh, writing here. Verse 12, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father, which is an interesting concept. Father dwelleth in me, I dwell in him, but I'm now going to go unto my Father, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And now you get this incredible teaching, starting in verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. I need to just pause here and say, often members of the church will get um, questioned or even at times attacked in, in friendly ways, but, but attacked by people who say, people in your church, you, you believe that you have to do things in order to be saved. We believe we're saved by grace, and, and you have to work your way into heaven. The funny thing about that is, is if you want to proof text certain passages in the Bible, largely from the writings of Paul, you could see how that, that teaching could sound very plausible and, and reasonable. And it is true, we are saved by grace. We are totally saved by grace, but the fascinating aspect is to read the words of Jesus Christ in the Gospels, because Jesus never once uses the phrase, you're saved by my grace, not once. Not once does he even use the Greek word charis, which is grace, in a salvific way. He only ever uses it by saying things like, if you do nice things to those who are kind to you, what, what grace is there in that? Is That's the, the way he uses the word grace. And some would say, well, wait, Jesus doesn't ever use the word grace in a salvation way? And the answer is no, not even in the Book of Mormon, 3rd Nephi account, does he ever use the word grace. And some would say, well, why not if it's such an important concept? I would suggest that Jesus embodies grace. His giving to us of his commandments and of his love and of his forgiveness and his mercy, he, he is embodying grace. But it doesn't mean that I can just sit back and let him embody grace and then eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow I die as long as I've accepted him. Look at what he says, if ye love me, keep my commandments. Are you seeing how this doesn't have to be in opposition to or in competition with grace? That it can actually be the embodiment of his grace? That he's saying, I'm giving you commandments. It's a gift of grace from me that I'm giving you commandments so that you can know how to act, you can know how to talk, you can know what to believe. That's grace. And now, as you struggle to keep those commandments, I will forgive you. That's grace. As you are able to keep those commandments, it's because you've drawn on my power, I'm, I'm enabling you, I'm helping you to keep those commandments. That's grace. It's everywhere in the, these teachings. The fact that he's focusing on his apostles, it's grace. It's all there, even though the word isn't there. And no, we aren't working our way into heaven we're striving to come unto Christ. It's our job to come to him with his help, and it's his job to get us to heaven.